Welcome to Watchtower History. So the February 22nd, 1965 Awake has an article. Your word is truth. Why not let your name be vindicated? It may well be asked, why Jesus did not tell his followers to pray, let your name be vindicated. So it says, from the foregoing, it's apparent that the term vindicate always applies a controversy, a charge or accusation of blame or guilt, and so is concerned with justice, the righting of a wrong. Thus, a certain person or group of persons may be wrongly charged with an outrage, but when the facts are made known, they are vindicated, exonerated. Likewise, scientific experiments may be said to vindicate a certain book or theory written or propounded by someone, but that does not mean that these persons or things are thereby sanctified or made sacred. So what they're doing here is saying this whole idea of vindicating Jehovah's name that we've been teaching for decades, they're saying we were wrong without saying we were wrong. And so they're starting. Yeah. And so now they were making it the sanctification of Jehovah's name instead. This is a watchtower, May 15th, 1995. And the article is flashes of light, great and small. And this is part two. So in 1995, a new flash of light happened when vindication went through a change. Again, the name was not what was being vindicated, but now it's Jehovah's sovereignty that this somehow is what would sanctify the sacred name. That entire doctrine that Rutherford created was based on the name. And here that's kind of forgotten. It's forgotten. Instead of admitting the idea was based on a false premise, they're just digging in deeper. And changing the word by changing the word. (laughs) All right, so here's a statement here. They say, what the leaders of Christendom find themselves in is this statement by a clergyman. Why sin? Why suffering? Why the devil? These are questions I want to ask the Lord when I get to heaven. But Jehovah's Witnesses can tell them why. Because the issue of the righteousness of Jehovah's sovereignty and the question as to whether human creatures can maintain integrity to God in spite of the devil's opposition. So this is baffling to me. Why not just remove the devil and see if human creatures can remain t- maintain integrity to God? Wouldn't that just remove the problem entirely? Mm-hmm. But so what does the devil have to do with it? <laughs> well, as paragraph 19 says, how blessed Jehovah's people are to be basking in all this spiritual light. <laughs> so in the June 2020 Watchtower, there's an article... Let your name be sanctified. In the article, there's a footnote. And that footnote says, On occasion, our publications have taught that Jehovah's name does not need to be vindicated because no one has called into question his right to bear that name. However, a clarified understanding was presented at the 2017 annual meeting. The chairman stated, simply put, It's not wrong to say that we pray for the vindication of Jehovah's name because his reputation certainly needs to be exonerated. We're going to start off by asking you a question. In fact, the governing body has directed me to ask the English-speaking brothers this question. What if? What if during Brother Smalley's prayer, he said, and we pray for the vindication of your name? How would you have reacted? Hmm? Oh, oh, no. feel sorry for Gene. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, it's true in English, over the years, we have tended to be very careful, haven't we, about saying the sanctification of Jehovah's name and the vindication of his sovereignty. But is it necessarily wrong for us to say that Jehovah's name could be vindicated? Well, back in 1965, the Awake magazine answered, yes, it would be wrong. Then in 1995, the Watchtower made the point Uh, that it re-emphasized that. It said, no one's questioning Jehovah's name, uh, so there's no need to vindicate that name. But the more we look at this subject, the more we see a need to adjust our understanding, particularly in English. So let's think about the words associated with this problem. First of all, sanctify. What does sanctify mean? Well, it means to make holy or to treat something as holy. 
And it's very appropriate, isn't it, that we pray for the sanctification of Jehovah's name. That's exactly what Jesus told us to do. Let your name be sanctified. So you can relax. There's no change with regard to that. But what about the word vindicate? Well, vindicate usually indicates exonerating or proving that someone is correct in something they've done. Perhaps they've been criticized and then they're proved to be true or correct. And what about the word name? Does it just refer to an identification or a label? Well, that's usually not the case in the Bible, is it? It oftentimes refers to the reputation of the person, not just their identifying name or label. Uh, for example, in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 1, it tells us a good name is to be chosen rather than great wealth. Now, in that case, name is referring to the reputation of the person. So let's think for a few minutes. What really has Satan criticized down through time? Well, first of all, he's criticized Jehovah's reputation his name. And secondly, he has criticized the rightfulness of Jehovah's sovereignty, or in other words, the way of ruling. So really, both of these things, Jehovah's reputation and his way of real, ruling, need to be vindicated. Satan has tried to besmirch the holy name of Jehovah in many ways. Uh, one way is by painting him as a vengeful, harsh God, or in the churches of Christendom, believing that uh, he is a God that burns people in a fiery hell. Or in the scriptures, we see him implying that Jehovah is a liar who holds back good things from his creatures. Well, in that case, we can see that Jehovah's name or reputation does need to be exonerated, or in other words, vindicated. So in summary, Jehovah's sovereignty certainly needs to be vindicated, as we've always said. But also his name as a loving God, his reputation needs to be vindicated. So it's not wrong for us to say that these actions of vindicating Jehovah's sovereignty, vindicating his name, lead to the sanctification of his name. Now, at this point, you're trying to think, what does that mean? Simply put, it's not wrong to say we pray for the vindication of Jehovah's name because his reputation certainly needs to be exonerated. And what a privilege we have to be part of that. Remember, for them, this is the most important doctrine and they already corrected saying you can't use that. Now he's saying, what if someone did say it? But now you're going to read. It, they right? corrected the most important doctrine. So why is now they're correcting it again it by accident? It, yeah. So yeah. My thoughts on that. Hold on a One, second. I, I, I don't need to be told personally. I don't mean this in an arrogant way, how to pray or whether I can pray and use certain words and, and, and them not be Jesus set out the pattern to pray to start with. So they're taking over that role too. pray this way um, Two, to me that that more seems like they're looking for ways to show we're moving forward. We're getting new. We're continually to grow. We got new things for you. We're always on stick with us. We're always learning They're And to me, that such a petty thing vindication set they're grasping at straws to try and come with some new, new improved uh, product. While at the same time, it, it's almost uh, they're, they're a little condescending down to the people they're saying it to. Like they need to say, it's not wrong. So I know this seems hard for you. And what, mm -hmm. and, okay, maybe some of us aren't sitting back. No, it's not that hard. No. That, so there's, to me, and I'm trying to say it as respectful as possible. Um, I think that is just a let's show growth, let's show progress, let's show something new. Um, I don't think they had it from the very beginning or else they wouldn't be changing it. So, yeah. All right. Well, what I took from it was he says, we're not like those other people that say, well, mm -hmm. Jehovah is a vengeful God and he's going to burn him for hell in eternity. 
I forgot. Well, at the to same go time, down. well, at the same time, he's saying he's and he's not saying, but you know what he means. We're saying that you know he'll be loving for us, yeah. but he's going to destroy billions at Armageddon if they're not Jehovah's Well, well loving for us yeah. if yeah. you make it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If you're disfellowshipped or don't follow us, it's not going to be so loving. So, again, this all stems out of this replacement theology thinking, this replacement theology interpretation, this applying everything to Watchtower after 1918 or 1919. All of these things, these are the implications of where it goes. And as we will get to in our next discussion, again, why? Why did he take this path? Why these particular interpretations? Where did those ideas come from? Well, the vindication, in, in a nutshell, as a reminder, came from the Jehovah book in 1934, yeah. where all things became secondary, including Jesus, to the vindication of Jehovah's name. Um, so now, once again, back to 1995, mm -hmm. it's sanctified. So, and in 2018, it's we're back to vindication. Not only did this idea appear in the Jehovah book in 1934, it was also in the booklet, his works. And there's this subheading in there, vindication. This is a new idea that he's introducing again. The idea that Jehovah's name needed to be vindicated and that it was because the time has come for the vindication of Jehovah's name. You remember, they're putting this from 1914 or 1918 forward. And so here he says, Jehovah sends forth amongst the people of men and women with his message of truth in order that the people may have the answer to this very question. Really? The vindication of Jehovah's name is not a question that would have ever entered my mind. He continues, the message what they bring to you is not man's message. God in his wisdom has permitted Satan to go on in wickedness. That in the end, Jehovah will cause all things to come to pass for the good of those who love righteousness. With the second coming of the Lord Jesus, and particularly his coming to his temple, the time is marked and due when the name of Jehovah must be declared throughout all the earth. This work of declaring the name of God must be done by the people whom he has taken out of the world for his name, that is, by Christians, the true followers of Christ Jesus. These Christians have been brought unto a knowledge of the fact that Jehovah is the great and almighty God, that he is above all, and that his name must be vindicated, that Christ Jesus is his chief agent and vindicator, and that the time is at hand for him to forever settle the issue raised by the devil's challenge, and that he will settle it by the vindication of his name. To this end, Jehovah God has sent Christ Jesus, placing him upon his throne of authority, where he presides in power and great glory. God's kingdom has come, and Christ, the head of that kingdom, is now acting and carrying forward the witness work in the earth, and this he will complete, and at the completion thereof will manifest Jehovah's power in the full vindication of God's name, and his kingdom will work deliverance to the obedient ones of God, and will establish everlasting peace upon the earth to those who will obey God. This is good news, our gospel. And all who love righteousness delight to hear the same. Therefore, the Lord God gives to all of the faithful followers of Christ Jesus this commandment. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. Jehovah's Witnesses must obey this commandment, and in obedience thereto they go forth preaching or declaring this gospel of the kingdom to the people as a witness to the name of Jehovah. That witness work soon must be completed, and when it is completed, what shall follow? The answer is given by Jesus in these words to it, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. Remember, Russell's message was a lot tamer. I think it was a lot more loving. Here, Rutherford's is becoming more judgmental and more isolationist. Only we're going to be saved. This is something that began with his sheep and goats doctrinal change. For sure now the message was going to be or was billions now living will die horribly in Armageddon. When did the period of waiting end for this message to be shared and what was the reasoning behind the message? It's at 1914 that Rutherford suggested that Satan was being cast out of heaven. So he says in this booklet, 
At the same time, Satan caused the true followers of Christ Jesus on earth to be wickedly persecuted and maltreated. There were a few who suffered persecution and maintained their integrity towards God. <laughs> Again, back, back to what we were talking about with that Rutherford's coup and such. And, and, and that seditious charge of them telling those who were in the military not to do the things. He, all those things that's going on there are things that he caused. So if Rutherford is suggesting the arrest and imprisonment, it was all Rutherford's fault for that crime of sedition. And again, see our faith in action review on that. Now, one more statement here. He's again making a dig at that evil servant class. And he's stating that it was the time that many of the consecrated fell away from God. Without further context, it might be difficult to know exactly what Rutherford was referring to, but then he makes it very, very clear. He says, then it was that Jehovah stopped the war. So now we know it was 1914 or, or, or 1918, right? 1919. And thereafter sent forth his witnesses in the earth to bear testimony of him and his kingdom. So before the end of the war, they didn't have the right message. The Lord knows who amongst his professed people are true and faithful to him. Rutherford again suggests that falling away happened before the end of the war. He can only refer to one thing. Again, he is referring to Rutherford's coup in 1917, which again, he was the cost. So again, see our rude interview and this book that he spent decades researching and writing. And that was just re released recently. I actually just re received the book today. And of course, we're recording these a long time in advance, but there you go. And again, we don't endorse too many books or ideas or, or, or channels or anything. Uh, that we, Rude was uh, generous enough to share some stuff with him when we were talking with him. Um, this is a well researched book. If, if anyone is questioning whether the Watchtower was taken over legally or illegally, that's the book to get. That was the book. He wrote what Jeff and I would have wrote and would put together for a book that we were thinking of doing. He did it. We don't need to do it anymore. In fact, we'll be quoting it in the future. Yeah. 